What is going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan and in this video we are going to talk about the five key ways that you can break into DevOps today. Whether it's a DevOps role, whether it's an SRE role, let's talk about what you actually need because a lot of these things, believe it or not, are not technical. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first, and this is just a reality everybody, I'm sorry, but it's not a beginner level role. So I really don't think that you can come out of college and you know, start in a DevOps role because there are a lot of prerequisites that you're gonna need to actually be successful in this space. There are a ton of different things that you need. So you'll see you know, junior level style DevOps roles, but to be honest with you, most of them are either sysadmin roles with a fancy title, they're junior developer roles with a fancy title, or even a lot of QA related work, which is perfectly fine. It's usually some fun stuff, so like you'll have some automated testing and all that in there. But chances are it's going to be one of those three. And, you know, when you get into that, like senior level DevOps, principal level DevOps, it's not a beginner level role. DevOps is not a beginner level role. So what I would recommend, and I'm not going to give it to you in years because I feel like you could have somebody with five years of experience on one spectrum and then five years on the other spectrum. And one of those people are probably way more far ahead than the other one. So I'm not going to give it to you in years. I'm going to give it to you in what you actually need to know which is what we're gonna break down right now. So that was number one. Number two, you need to have a solid understanding of systems, Linux, Windows, I would say primarily Linux, but it's really gonna depend on the environment that you're in. So what I do recommend is spend some time as a sysadmin or as an infrastructure engineer, whatever you wanna call it, dive deep into servers, into systems, into virtualization. Nowadays, you'll probably be spinning stuff up in the cloud as well. Understand the actual operating system because even though you know we got all these fancy terms like Kubernetes and Docker, <laughs> it's all running on a system in one way or another. Whether it's serverless, it's still running on a system. Whether it's a VM, it's running on a system. Whether it's in the cloud, it's running on a system. Systems, especially operating systems, are super crucial. So right here, I have two books that I wanna show you. Well, actually three. Number one, it's the RHCSA and then the RHCE. Now, this is for a certification, but you don't need to get the certification. I'm not, I'm not asking you to get any certification. I'm just saying, if you go through something like this, like a Linux book, and you go through the labs and all that stuff, you're gonna get a really good understanding, and of course, real world experience. Now, if you wanna keep it basic from a Linux standpoint, Linux Plus is always good, but you might not get that hands-on goodness. However, from this book, I'll argue that you'll definitely get what you need to jump into a Linux environment. And then another one is Mastering Windows Server 2019. So if you wanna pick up one of these like Mastering Windows Server books, they're typically good, they have a ton of labs in them. Or if you have like an old MCSA, MCSE, or even if you wanna buy one from Amazon, one of those books laying around, that certification is not valid anymore. So like you can't actually go and sit for it anymore. I believe they canceled it already, or they definitely are at some point, um, but they might have already. Still, read the book, go through the lab, that's all you need. You don't need to get a certification in, in systems, you just need to understand systems and learn them. And the best way to learn something, as we all know in tech, is actually dive in and do it. So pick up one of these three books. Now the next is, have a solid understanding of programming. Now I'm not saying that you need to go and build the next Twitter, you don't need to go and build the next Instagram, you don't need to go build a fancy front end or back end app or anything like that, but you do need to know programming fundamentals. You need to know what functions are. You need to know what variables are. You need to know why you want to write code, why you want to automate, what architecture looks like, what an actual application is going to look like that you're going to be deploying. You can't deploy an application successfully or even troubleshoot a CICD pipeline, anything like that, any type of automation where you're taking an application, you're deploying into a system, whether that system is a container, serverless, VM, bare metal, whatever. You cannot troubleshoot an application unless you actually know what's happening inside of an application. And to do that, you need to have a good understanding of programming. Again, you don't have to build a fancy application, but understanding the basics and going through and you know creating a basic web API, creating you know a basic backend, writing some automation code with something like Pulumi uh, or the AWS CDK, all great options, even the HashiCorp CDK. Now, where can you start? <laughs> I'll give myself a little bit of plug here, but you're on my YouTube channel anyway, so it's, I don't think it's really a plug. But if you want to get some free courses, you can either look at my Golang playlist here. It's literally pretty much a full course. Um, or my Python course here, which 
this is some of my older content from you know beginning ish of tw or middle ish of 2020 so it's probably not as good from like a video quality perspective like i know a lot of them i i had this issue from like a youtube standpoint where it just like looked like this however it's free so go and check it out i also have a ton of other python videos i have a ton of other go videos so definitely check those out if you want to get started now the fourth have solid communication skills i will not tell you this enough this is probably the best thing that i'll ever be able to teach anybody that follows me on linkedin on twitter that watches my youtube stuff that buys books for me courses anything the best thing that i can teach you the most important thing that i can teach you communication soft skills i'm telling you guys it's so important to learn soft skills i would not have been able to make high six figures without understanding soft skills being able to communicate being able to articulate being able to talk to both engineers and the leadership team vps directors c level all of that stuff negotiation I would not have been able to do that i would not be able to go and consult for clients because realistically you gotta you gotta remember something when i'm consulting like i'm the product you know i'm i'm really essentially selling my brand and i'm telling them hey this is why you should bring me on as a consultant or an advisor or have me create content for you something like that all of that stuff and the way that i'm able to do everything is because i have really good communication skills i'm telling you it's super crucial even if you don't want to go out on your own and you don't want to consult a freelance and you want to move up the corporate ladder that's totally cool but if you want to do that, you still have to have really good communication skills. I'd actually argue that you need to have better communication skills in the corporate world than you do if you're just working for yourself. And then the fifth thing, have a thirst to learn. This is super crucial. And remember, all of these things that you have to learn in today's world, Kubernetes, Docker, programming, etc., they all kind of tie in with each other. I'll give you an example here. Let's say you want to learn Go, Golang, the programming language. So that's step one. So you learn Go, you take a few months, you learn Go. Next, you wanna learn Docker. So you say, okay, well, how can I learn Docker? I need an application to be able to deploy and containerize and all that stuff. Guess what? You just learn Go, so you can take th those skills, that uh, maybe small web API that you created, and you can containerize it in, in Docker. And then the next thing that you wanna learn is maybe Kubernetes, and you say, huh, well, you need a Docker container to be able to orchestrate and deploy on Kubernetes. Boom, guess what? You already learned it. That was step two, you learned Docker. So now you've learned Go, Docker, and Kubernetes. And now finally you're like, huh, okay, now I wanna learn some CI, CD, because I see this in a lot of job postings and you know, or maybe my current job wants me to learn it or something like that. Well, guess what? You already know Go, so you can create a small web app. You already know Docker, so you can containerize it. You already know Kubernetes, so you can orchestrate it. Now, you wanna learn CI, CD? Cool, deploy your Go app somewhere, you know? Or you could even, take your Go app, containerize it, and deploy it to Kubernetes all in a CI CD pipeline. All right, everybody. So let's break down our five ways that we can break into DevOps in the SRE space today. Understand it's not a beginner level role. Get a solid understanding of systems, Linux, Windows. Get a solid understanding and basic fundamental level of programming. I recommend Go or Python. Have the ability to communicate. Soft skills will be the thing that takes you to the next level not learning all the new technology. You need to learn the new technology, but that kind of ends up being a byproduct of what you're doing anyways. Soft skills, communication, super crucial. And then finally, the fifth, have a thirst to learn. You have to want to be in this space. If you're in tech today, guess what? You're gonna be learning every day for the rest of your life. You're gonna be learning new stuff all the time. Have a thirst to learn. And with that, I hope that these tips help you break into the DevOps space, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and I hope everybody has a good day. Take care.